Hello friends, I'm no therapist, but I'm your host Stephanie Goodman. I'm a wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a woman of faith. Often friends ask me how I have a successful marriage while blending families and staying optimistic in life. This podcast features people with real life stories about success in relationships and triumph over trial. Giving birth is very unpredictable. It's exciting, it's challenging, and it doesn't always go the way that we planned. My guest, Sheridan Ripley, is a childbirth educator, birth doula, and life coach. She shares her personal stories along with tips and tools for enjoying pregnancy, birth, and relationships. Hello friends, I'm so excited to introduce to you my dear friend, Sheridan Ripley. Sheridan has been willing to come and share her gifts with me today and I'm excited to share them with you. Real quickly, could you introduce to my audience a little bit about yourself? Sure, I'd love to. First off, thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate it and I am was so fun to meet you and I love your positive, joyful energy. It's so great. So I'm so happy to be here. Um, I am a mom of three boys and a wife of one man. And he's <laughs> and that was sort of a weird way to say that. Good to clarify that. Yes. Uh, but um anyway, I I have a, a whole bunch of things that I've done over the past many years, but the very first thing that I was very passionate about was birth and helping women to enjoy birth. My first birth was pretty traumatic. It was an emergency C-section at 34 weeks, and I had been on bed rest um, from 25 weeks. So I had a pretty traumatic pregnancy and birth. And when I got pregnant with my second child, um, I had a lot of trauma to overcome from that first experience. And I wasn't necessarily sure how to handle that, but I um, found some different tools. I used hypnosis for birth, which um, hypno babies, which helped me to um, really kind of heal that uh, first experience and feel confident about giving birth um, for Carson. And then with my third birth, I, I used hypno babies and had a really great healing birth then as well. And that inspired me to become a childbirth educator. I taught hypno babies for years and was a doula as well for my students. A doula is someone that goes to people's births and helps them during the birth. So that was so fun. I loved doing that. It was pretty magical. Oh, that, that is incredible. I love that you actually had a personal experience and through that personal experience, it opened you up to the possibilities and, and being aware of your passion. Yeah. And that's what brought it to life for you. Um, you mentioned, you mentioned that you are a doula and I was wondering if you could clarify for me and my audience, what is the difference between a doula and a midwife? Okay, that's a great question. So a midwife is actually trained to do medical things and can like check the baby's heart tones and can check the mom and make sure mom and baby are physically healthy. And a doula is more of a support person, um, emotional support. As a, as a hypno doula, I would help my clients to stay in hypnosis while they were birthing. And so definitely more on uh, emotional or spiritual support. I mean, I would physically support women, like rub their backs and things like that, but I wouldn't do anything medical. So do you have to have a midwife and a doula for that experience? Yeah. So my, my clients would either have a home birth with a midwife or they'd birth in a hospital with an obstetrician or a midwife in the hospital. So they'd have a medical care provider. And I was a more of a emotional care provider, I guess you could say. Which I think is extremely important, especially when you're in that vulnerable space. And, and a lot of the times women are right between life and death. 
Like they're touching that space so, so sacredly. Yes. And if you have someone who is in tune to spirit and allowing themselves to be an instrument, you know, in God's hands and bringing this baby through, I think that's an incredible gift and a talent that I think is definitely needed in this world and would give women a more beautiful experience if they were able to take on that service. Yeah. I've not heard of hypno baby or hypno birthing before. Had you heard of that before you had your baby? So my first baby, I hadn't heard of it, but then my aunt used um, hypno birthing. And so I learned about it for my second one. Um, and I studied that and then hypno babies is a, another hypnosis for childbirth program. And that's the one I studied for my third baby. So there's different hypnosis for childbirth programs, but it's basically learning how to put yourself into hypnosis. And then there's different tools and techniques to help you stay calm and relaxed during your birthing time and more comfortable. So, so are there different techniques that play better for different moms in different situations? Um, yeah, I mean, it just kind of depends. Each child, each hypnosis for childbirth program has different uh, tools and techniques. For me, I found that hypno babies had a lot more tools that I could use during my birthing time. And as, and that's why I used it, but also then that's why I went on to teach that particular childbirth program. And I loved all the different tools that I was able to help the mom and their birth partner learn. And they really learned how to be good um, teammates, if you will. And the birth partner had certain tools that he could use to help mom stay calm and comfortable as well. So it definitely, each program has their own pluses and minuses. And for me, I found that Hypno Babies was super complete. Oh, I love that. Um, would you share with me maybe some experiences that you have had in gifting that gift to women? Yeah. Maybe, maybe something where you're so grateful that you were able to call upon these tools and being able to help them through this situation. You bet. Um, so the first thing that comes to mind is actually um, a mom who was wanting to have a home birth. And she worked really hard and preparing. And then I was there as her doula and she was making some good progress at home, but then something was going on and the baby wasn't looking so good. And the midwife is like, I think we need to transfer. And the mom, you know, her first instinct was one of disappointment. Mm -hmm. And, um, but we actually with hypno babies, there's a change of plan script. So I was able to read that to her really quickly and just kind of shift her energy to, um, be more at peace with this decision. And it was, um, it was a good medical decision, right? It was, so it was super helpful to be able to help her shift spiritually and emotionally as well. And as we moved to the hospital and got settled there, she was able to have a really nice birth experience at the hospital as to finish up, right? Cause she had birthing time at home and then she transferred and then she birthed the baby at the hospital. And I remember going to her house afterwards um, cause I always do a postpartum visit and just meeting with her. And I was kind of like wondering how is she gonna feel about everything that transpired? And she said, I loved my birth. She's like, I feel like I had a home birth and a hospital birth. And she had this really positive attitude about, about what had happened. And I will say that not everyone can have as easy of a transition if something unexpected comes up. But I do know that birth is very unpredictable and we can plan for a specific thing to happen, but it doesn't always go that way. And so having different tools to help us stay calm and comfortable um, emotionally when changes come up can be very beneficial. And also having those support people who can really help you is helpful as well. Definitely. And I, I haven't heard of a script before. Okay. Can you so dive into that a little bit for me? So that's a hypnosis script. 
So with hypno babies, there's different scripts that moms can listen to like on MP3, but there's also if um, birth partners like have those scripts written out and so they can actually read them to them. Um, and it's just a type of um, helping a mom get into a relaxed state and then giving her suggestions. So for instance, there's not an MP3 of the change of plans script um, because most moms won't need that, but it is written out in a booklet. So as the doula or as the birth partner could have read it. So it's there available to read if something comes up and a change of plans is needed. Okay. Well, I can definitely appreciate a script for change of plans as we also experience a change of plans. And I'm curious if you could maybe walk us through a little bit of change of plan script and maybe that would be useful not only in birthing situations, but, but in life situations. For sure. That's actually really great insight because we did have a change of plans today. I was supposed to come to your house mm -hmm. and then something came up and then that didn't work. But luckily we have technology and I can do it this way. Momming week. came up, and right? Momming, even adult <laughs> kids. We still have to Those mom them. Unexpected plans. Yes. Came up. Yes. And I think that is one thing. Like now I don't do a lot of Mm, I don't do a lot of physical birth work. I'm not acting as an active doula, but I, I have different books and a podcast about birth. So I still am helping moms birth a step removed. Um, <laughs> but I also do more life coaching now where I'm helping moms mom. And yeah, for sure. There are always changes of plans. And I find that our attitude and being able to go with the flow when needed can be really helpful. But it's not always easy to just change plans. And so it does take a lot of thought work. And I think also getting to that place where you can accept that it doesn't always go the way we plan. <laughs> like that, that is so true, especially in mothering, we can definitely embrace that in our universe, even in relationships. Sometimes things really don't go the way that you plan. Right. And depending on how you're able to deal with that is where your security lies. And sometimes we don't have those tools for getting through a situation. So would you mind sharing with me a script for uh, accepting when things change? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So what I'd probably have you do is close your eyes okay. and just make this up on the fly while we go, but that's what I could do. So, okay. And friends, if you're watching, I highly recommend you and I, I invite you to participate with us. Yes. As long as you're not driving, you can <laughs> close your eyes. If you're driving. It's very good. Driving. If you're putting yourself in danger by participating with us, yes. <laughs> please but, don't do so. Yes. But okay. So if you can close your eyes, do so. And then just take a deep breath and exhale. And then take another breath. And as you exhale again, just feel your shoulders relaxing, and your body sinking down into the chair, or the floor. And if you can just imagine if you have a plan set ahead of you, yet something has come up, maybe a roadblock has blocked that path you were planning on taking. Just take a breath and see that block in the road. And first, just allow yourself to feel whatever emotions that does evoke because we are human and we might feel frustrated or worried or any other emotion. Just go ahead and feel what emotion that might be and maybe name it like the number one emotion that seeing that block in the road has evoked in your body and mind and spirit. Now take another breath and imagine opening before your eyes that are closed, but like in your mind's eye, like you suddenly see there's another path, a fork in the road that can take you around that block. And as this path opens before you, you see that it is a good path. 
that there are flowers there that you maybe wouldn't have seen, that there's birds singing. And so you start going along that path that is open ahead of you. And as you travel that path, knowing it can get you to the same place where you need to go eventually, feel what feelings might be there. Maybe you feel some reassurance or peace and maybe even a little excitement of something different. So as you take another deep breath, you feel that feeling and just maybe name in your head what that number one feeling is. And still imagine going along that path and now coming to your destination and taking a breath and feeling gratitude that you can get where you need to be today. And another breath, and as you exhale, you can go ahead and open your eyes. So that was super short, but kind of gives you a taste of what that could look like. Well, I want to know what feeling did you feel, I guess, first when you saw the block in the road? There was, there was concern. There was um, disappointment. Uh, there was a little bit of sadness. Mm -hmm. And I appreciated being able to actually give a voice to those feelings. That was very powerful for me. Good. Yeah. I'm optimistic thinking by nature. And uh, so when you talked about being able to take another path around to our destination, I thoroughly embrace that. You know, everything happens for a reason. And what if this turns out better than, than the original plan was, right? Right. right. Well, unbeknownst to you, we had worked on setting up a program that was able to move one camera to the next by just a toggle situation. Uh, my husband used it for a uh, church calling that he has, and we were able to record the meetings flawlessly. There was no complications with it. And last night and today, that system was not reacting. So we actually have to buy a new monitor and we're hoping that while we had our time together that the battery operation would be able to cover our story long enough. So when things didn't work out for you to be able to come to my home, opening up to Zoom, and by the way, this is only my second time to be able to use Zoom to welcome a dear friend into my, my world of podcasting. So this is a good experience for me to be able to learn from. And it also relieved my sweet husband for all of his service in putting this together that now we have time to be able to work on it to make it happen. So there taking you me through that journey helped me to be mindful of that. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. So I want to dive into the fact that you are a life coach. I was able to enjoy some of your beautiful services in healing my life. And this is where I'm passionate about wanting to share your message with women, especially those who know that that past experience has interrupted their life flow, their relationships, their parenting abilities, their ability to show up for who they truly are. Mm -hmm. I am so grateful that we were able to get together. I was very concerned about being vulnerable about my own story. And it wasn't until I happened to share it with you that I realized that it was, it was a traumatic experience. And then it had rewired my brain because of the trauma that I had experienced from it. Um, briefly, I was in labor for 24 hours. I'm learning now that that's about average for a first baby. 
Um, but my situation led me to have to having an emergency C-section and a cousin had experienced that similar story, only her child lived for 45 minutes after birth. So when I was given told, when I was told the information that I was going to be going into emergency C-section, I relived her trauma for myself, probably just because I'm empathetic in nature that suddenly I understood on a new level that loss of expecting a baby and wanting to take this baby home and now not being able to do that. But that changed, the plan had changed, right? And I think that in some level, I actually experienced uh, survivor's guilt, especially because it was my cousin. Um, I have recently also experienced another cousin that was giving birth to a stillborn. And mother to mother, my heart just goes out to her in the loss. Also, the beautiful, incredible gift that she'll be receiving from being in that service of bringing that baby into the world for its purpose. I want to go into my story a little bit more because I feel like the gifts that you brought into the space when I was able to visit with you was so profound for me. And you took me all over the place. I had no idea all this was coming out. I, I had the story of being alone in the hospital. I had the story of another woman next to me whose husband was missing and then found dead in the back of a white van during during the uh, Olympics commotion that was happening in Salt Lake City, Utah, and how that affected me again on a level of empathetic, but also guilt of um, having a better life than she was experiencing. And being able to breathe through that to recognize to give voice to my experience and to I think I think the thing that healed me the most was going back and being able to recognize my younger self and giving her grace you know um I try to live my life in a way of strength, love, and grace, which are words that I embraced from Wonder Woman, actually. I I wear it on my wrist here. It is the Wonder Woman signal, and it says strength, love, and grace on the back of that. Um, I'm a big, big component of the power of words and wearing words and I think that's also another level that you and I connect where we are mindful of the words that we use really do create our world. Now, uh, I want to digress and open the time up to you to share your experience, maybe even with me, what you experienced with me on my journey and how that can help other women in their relationships. Yeah. So I think that it is, um, it's interesting because for sure there's women who do experience trauma during birth. And I had done that with my oldest and our relationship had a lot of strain in it that I think started with that um, difficult pregnancy and birth experience. Mm -hmm. And so I was hunting for healing from that for both him and me. And he was about nine years old when I discovered some tools and techniques that were very powerful in healing him, healing me, healing our relationship. Ooh. And, um, and then that inspired me to delve deeper and then to help other women in healing. And just, I, I, I'm never surprised where it goes. Like it was interesting talking to you and seeing all the different things that, um, 
what you shared and I'm just open to anything. And, uh, I'm never surprised. Um, sometimes I might feel sad at what has happened, but I'm just like, okay. And I just help, help to name what it is maybe that you were feeling and acknowledge that. And then like to just walk you through a short visualization. That's kind of, we find some stuff and then we walk through a little visualization and help to clear and release that stuff and put in sometimes a proper perspective or a different perspective that can also bring healing. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just powerful. Really, it's powerful for women to be, have a safe place where they can express what happened to them. Yes. And, and to just be heard and that in and of itself is healing. Yeah. And then just processing it together adds that level of healing and, and does really kind of open that path. I kind of view it as we just got a little visualization, we walked around the block and sometimes mm-hmm. you have to do that. But I feel like what we did kind of was like, picked up the block, looked at it and said, Oh, okay, thank you. And like, gave it to Jesus. That's how I like to do it. Let's just give it (laughs) to Jesus, you know, and there's power in that. So yeah, I, I loved doing that, that work with you and seeing where it brought us and what, um, what came up and it's always interesting. There's always different layers. It's never, it's usually not simple. Yeah. And I, thoroughly appreciated being able to, like you said, give a name to the experience and also replace it. Being able to recognize and validate Stephanie of that, that era in her twenties, experiencing becoming a mom for the first time and some of the hard things that happened during that time, but realizing I'm strong. I made it through that. And I'm a loving, dedicated mother, and I'm better for that experience. I also thoroughly appreciated that gift of of learning how to place those burdens into the hands of the Savior. There is a technique that I use in my bathtub. I love bath bombs. And I have decided to turn my bath bombs into forgiveness bombs. So that. during the time that I am allowing that bath bomb that's heavy in my hands to dissolve, I'm thinking of the things that I am forgiving. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's a heavier uh, subject. But I'm I'm in my Heavenly Father's arms and I trust in his gifts that whatever it is that's heavy in my hands is dissolving. There is a scent that is reassuring and refreshing. And I believe that when we place our burdens into the hands of the Lord, then he can take it and use it for good. That there's a gift for the experience. I love that. And I know that you have experienced some hard things in life and you share these tools on your platforms. Can we dive into where our audience can reach you or maybe even participate in some of the services or uh, just even hear your podcast? Yeah. So I have two platforms about birth. One is called enjoybirth.com. And I have a free ebook on there, the top three tips to enjoy birth. Um, I also have a podcast called Enjoying Pregnancy and Birth. Mm. Um, And then I have another birth um, book called The Gift of Giving Life. And it is about the spirituality of pregnancy and birth. And I co-authored it with other women. And there's beautiful stories in there as well as essays. And I have a podcast called The Gift of Giving Life, where I touch on that. And there's the website, thegiftofgivinglife.com. Those are beautiful avenues, especially for our friends that are maybe still in the process of creating their families. 
to be able to utilize those tools and to have a platform to be able to go to that we didn't have, right? Right. Yes. Yeah. I'm really enjoying the podcasting about those topics because I've blogged about them for years, but podcasting, it's so fun to like interview people and to share stories, et cetera. So I'm loving that. And then my more life coaching, like, so that's my birth world. And then my life <laughs> world, I guess I have a podcast called finding joy in the journey. Which and- I love that title. Thank you. <laughs> Finding joy in the journey. Yes. And I have a website, SheridanRipley.com, where you can easily find that. I have, um, so I have those birth books and then I have a book about so the top. Your dot com is your first and last name, yeah. Sheridan Ripley. Ripley. Will you spell that for us? I will. Sheridan, S-H-E-R-I-D-A-N, Ripley, R-I-P-L-E-Y.com. Dot com. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah. So I have the birth books and then I have a 40 day prayer challenge book, a 40 day meditation challenge book. And then I have a book called the Mexico miracle, which is a whole other topic, but needless to say, God hears and answers mother's prayers and miracles happen. So. And we learn how to take hard things and see the gift in it through some of the tools that you mentioned in your book, actually, I was skimming through some of those and there are some powerful tools of releasing, forgiving, which can be such a heavy, heavy subject, depending on what the circumstances are that you're dealing with at that time. Do you feel that mentors in your life brought these tools into your, into your possession I mean, definitely I have taken so many classes and read so many books and gathered all these tools and sometimes adjusted them a little bit to make them more powerful for, um, for me, for those women that I work with, but absolutely. I mean, there are, there are so many amazing women in my life that have taught me so much. And then I love sharing what I've learned with others. Would you say that utilizing these tools have you've seen a difference in your own relationship with your husband? I'm sure with your family, but I, I really want to focus on a husband because I I am so grateful that I have a good, strong marriage. And I believe that there are certain tools that I use in my relationships that keep us strong. And I know that experiences that we have can either make us or break us. And I love that you have learned about some of these tools. Um, Do you have a minute you can share with us personal experience? Yeah, so for sure. I think that one of my favorite um, tools for lots of things, but especially with my husband, is I love talking to him spirit to spirit. So that's where it's like, he's not actually here in front of me, but I imagine he's here in front of me or often when I'm driving, I'll talk to him. Um, And what I'm doing when I do that is some first, sometimes I'll kind of share my like grumpiness. Usually I do it when I'm grumpy, to be honest. Right. So like he does something that has some frustrations. Yeah. Yeah. The frustrations and, and like, he knows, but I don't want to like vent at him. I'll kind of do spirit to spirit where I'm like venting at his spirit, right? Where I'm just like, oh, honey, that really bugs me when you do that. And I kind of get it all out. But then when I'm done, like releasing that, then I'm like, but I also really love this, you know, so I kind of then do my gratitude. And then what I find when I'm back with him in person, since I've already gotten all that ickiness out, I'm able to just say the things I'm grateful for. And so that to me is really powerful. It's not that I don't address the things if they need to be addressed. It's just, I've already released all the energy around it. Mm -hmm. So I'm more grounded and peaceful when I then do discuss it with him. Yeah. And he can then receive it more easily than if I'm just yelling at it. Yeah. Yeah. And I know too, that when we are frustrated, a lot of the times we're not mindful of, 
our actions. We're not mindful of the words that we say. I like to think of the fact that when we are in that frustrated place, we're actually acting like seven-year-olds. Totally. Or two-year-olds sometimes. Sometimes right? two-year-olds. It's true. It's true. Yeah. We say things that we don't mean and we're not able to cognitively recognize the other person's body language. Yeah. Because How we powerful. Are, we're like, ah. so yeah. So that's why I really like to do that. Just spirit to spirit, get it out. And then I'm able to feel again, that gratitude and love. And then when I'm with him, I can just be more in a place of gratitude and love. Again, there's times I have to address the situation if there's, you know, something that needs to be addressed, but I'm mm -hmm. able to do it more calmly and lovingly so he can accept it better. And then it, everything works a little bit more smoothly. I think that's so beautiful. And I'll definitely be practicing that. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know how it goes. <laughs> I think it's good to be able to, as you taught me today, to put words to the expression, to the experience, um, that that is empowering just to understand it in the first place. Right. And not to deny it because it's okay. I'm pretty sure every wife gets mad at her husband. We all get frustrated or have resentment or we have feelings like this is human. And if we just try and say, oh, I shouldn't feel that. Oh, no, no. You know, and just push it down. Well, it's still there and it's bubbling up. And that's when we then explode. Um, so by being able to acknowledge my feelings and say them, if, even if not to a space, that gives it an outlet. And, it, and that is healing. That is um, essential, I think, to helping us process our emotions. If we just ignore them, they're still there. And they're going to come back at some point. So, yeah, yeah. I've noticed when we don't express certain things that we may feel that we're, we're doing fine. We're managing them internally and nobody knows about it, but honestly, they continue to bubble and boil until boom, they pop off and we are exploding. And now we have to take back our words of anger, right? Right. Yes. I thoroughly enjoyed going down this road of discovery with you, learning about hypno baby or birthing and the difference between a midlife and a doula and also putting a, a practice of when things don't go the way that you plan it to, that it can be okay. You can breathe through this. You can allow the gift of the experience to come through and how that heals our relationships, both with ourself, how we show up in the world and our interaction with our spouses and even our children. Thoroughly love that. Knowing what you have experienced, what is some advice that you would give your younger self if you had the opportunity to sit in the room with her? Wow. I mean, that could go so many ways, right? But I think if I was to go back to the younger self I'd want to talk to would probably be my um, myself when I had two little kids, my first two little kids. Mm -hmm. And I had postpartum depression with my second, with Carson. And it was really hard. And I didn't realize I had postpartum depression. Oh, yeah. Um, I, it just, everything was dark and I wasn't functioning. And it wasn't really till it ended. And so I was like, oh, there's sunshine. <laughs> you know, that I was like, wow, I think I was depressed. Um, but I think I would love to sit down and talk with her. And I think I'd first off say, be kind to yourself. Because I was pretty hard on myself at that point. Mm -hmm. And I would say, you're doing, you're doing the best you can. And um, it's okay to ask for help. And I think that um, is probably what we all need. We all need to be kinder to ourselves and probably all of us need to ask for help too. And even if it's asking God for help or asking angels for help or asking a friend for help or yeah. getting a therapist or getting medication sometimes, right? Like there's so many different levels of help, but all of us need help. And it can be simple or it might be more involved. 
but, um, and, and that kindness and being kind to myself. I think I would just say, you're doing good. You're going to be okay. It's going to be okay. And ask for help too. Like, <laughs> I just do think that sometimes we don't know we need help when we are depressed. That mm-hmm. that's a tricky thing. We might not be able to see it. So yeah. I think I, if I could sit with her, I'd be like, I think you're depressed. You need to get some help. <laughs> mm. I think that's beautiful advice. I was given the analogy a while back, and I think it's profound, where a fish in dirty water doesn't realize a fish is in dirty water until it's given a new environment. And I think with postpartum depression, depression, stress, anything of that sort, a lot of the times, like you said, you didn't even realize that you were in that space until you saw the sunshine. Yeah. And I, I think that it is empowering for us to be able to ask for help. Even Wonder Woman asks for help. <laughs> right. She needs backup. She needs her power friends to be at her side. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Excellent. Sheridan, thank you so much for making this happen. I know we, we were meant to have this conversation in this specific specific way and i think it really has been such a gift thank you for sharing your skills and and gifts with us um i would like to share with our audience how they can reach you that you do have services that can help them through their birthing experience but also like me who is completely done with having children on this earth Uh, you can also receive healing for your past trauma and Sheridan has the gifts of being able to walk you through a visualization process to to give yourself empathy and you will see a difference in your relationship in your world when you utilize her gifts if you've enjoyed this episode remember to subscribe share like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. Please comment because I would love to hear about what you think and what you want to see in the future. I'm no therapist, but I am your host, Stephanie Goodman.